What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another audiobook. Today, we are starting um, this this new book, <laughs> which, um, well, I, I say it's it's oh, it's it's a fantastic new book, but um, it's my book, basically. Well, I say it's my book, but it was the competition that I run. Um, I run a competition called Fazbear Rights. If you've never heard of it. Uh, I might be doing a third one soon, but this is the second one, Showtime. Today we are reading the first story, which is Showtime by Classy Baryonyx. Congratulations on the uh, on the win. Um, it's a really good story, so let's just get straight into it. Jonathan was late, as usual, to his job at the local Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And as he slammed open the door to the old building, he saw the usual indicator for how late he was. It's 1pm. Where on earth have you been? Right on cue, as he predicted the young woman that he dreaded meeting named Alice had noticed his absence and decided to walk over and shame him in front of the customers. Sorry, but I had more important things to do, Jonathan said. He had trouble trying to excuse himself since he wasn't quite the social guy, but rather the more quiet antisocial guy. More important than your job things? Alice abruptly interrupted his thoughts. Jonathan tried to get something out of his mouth, but before he could move his jaw, Alice started another sentence. You gotta get the suit on real quick. She did some sort of pose to show her being assertive, but with her manila... I don't actually know... Is it vanilla? Is it supposed to be vanilla? Is that a typo, classy? Oh my god. Uh, Vanilla-looking uniform and blonde frizzy hair. It ended up looking like she was a crazy mom. Okay, okay, Jonathan said, stifling a laugh. Because of Alice's power stand, he moved from the entrance area back towards the dining room and towards the backstage door, but he was cut off by another employee. Hey, Jonathan, the employee said. Oh, hi, Matt, he said awkwardly. Matt was an average-looking guy with long black hair and the standard Fazbear uniform. Hey, man, I've been wondering where you've been since you didn't show up to the monthly meeting. Look, I don't have time. I need to get suited up for the birthday party. But Matt wouldn't allow Jonathan to leave. Well, before that, there are some important things that you need to know about. One of the higher-ups is coming down today to see if everything is up to date. And we also changed the security systems. But Jonathan didn't have time at all for some trivial information. I gotta go, man. He rushed past Matt and entered the backstage area. He noticed that as Matt barely had time to say the lock, uh, to say the lock of the backstage door was a new shiny metal keypad. Jonathan turned around and to his surprise, his normal brown bear costume was now replaced with a metal looking fox hanging from the wall. It was a shiny white with an orange snout and lavender highlights. He looked down towards the table that he would normally eat his lunch on and saw a new CRT monitor with a stack of VHS tapes on it. Underneath the table, he could make out a grey VHS player. Extremely confused, he picked up one of the VHS tapes labelled Showtime in big purple letters. He kneeled underneath the table and inserted it into the grey VHS player. The screen turned into static, and then an animated version of the metal fox started dancing, and a bored male voice blared out of the monitor. Welcome, the voice started. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. A magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. This tape is to introduce you to our brand new mascot suit and how to operate it. Jonathan was confused why he would need a video to help him to do a simple task, such as wear a suit, but he kept watching. You're probably thinking, why would I need to know how to wear a suit? Well, this is not a costume, it is a Springlock animatronic wearable suit. Jonathan glanced over to the Springlock suit, or whatever it was, but he was interrupted by a speaker blaring out a message. Showtime will begin in five minutes. Be ready to welcome our new Fazbear friend. Jonathan started to stress. He was worried that if a higher up would see him fail to perform in time, that he would be fired. He turned his attention toward the monitor that was in the middle of a sentence. Take your spring lock hand crank and push in towards the left armpit of the animatronic. Jonathan picked up what looked like a wrench 
combined with a screwdriver and pressed into the left armpit of the metal fox, which popped open the torso in two and launched him into the wall behind him. In a state of panic, he tried to listen to the voice on the monitor. Now press the metal beams into place on the sides of the animatronic's stomach. He did as the voice said, and with a loud snap, all of the metal bars were fixed onto the walls of the torso. Jonathan's head was hurting due to the wall slam and all the loud noises. When the torso is clear, open up all the other parts except for the head and do the same. Jonathan was feeling dizzy, but did, uh, but did as the voice commanded. And now it all comes together. Step inside of the torso and place your arms and legs inside of their respective place. He got inside and instantly felt heavier than steel. It is time to place the head on yours, and then press the two buttons under its jaw to connect it. He slowly picked up the head and slid it into place on top of him. He felt for the buttons and pressed them simultaneously, causing the whole suit to stiffen. If under any circumstances the suit fails and causes any pain, make sure to safely make your way out of sight to not scare any customers. Wow, I love that. Putting putting uh, the customers' um, like safety in front of the employees. I, I like that touch. That's cool. Scare anyone? Jonathan started to breathe heavily and suddenly he felt his body becoming wet. He could feel the side of the torso shaking. He let out a scream which caused the beam by his cheek to stab him right through the cheekbone. The sudden sharp pain caused him to tremble. He walked towards the door to get help, but when he pulled down the handle, it refused to open. Oh God, Jonathan's voice was trembling as the door was locked, and since he didn't stay to hear about it, he now was stuck in what felt like a giant coffin. Another bar in his glow flew right into his index finger. The voice was back from earlier, and now welcome our new friend onto the stage. The giant metal door, painted like a curtain, opened up to reveal a bunch of lights from the dining room. He walked towards the opening and onto the stage. It's showtime, yelled the announcer which caused the crowd to go wild. Loud music started blasting from speakers on each side of him. He tried to scream for help, but the music muted him. He looked around the dining room in horror, but no one else could see what he felt. He stepped forward, but was met with what felt like a spike piercing his heel. It felt like walking in water, and his torso suddenly jolted him backwards, causing a giant metal bar to stab him right through his lungs. It was like being trapped underwater. Liquid filled his lungs, and his arms completely snapped, which caused them to fall to his sides, becoming completely limp. He no longer felt the pain. His eyes met a man in front of the crowd, dressed in a black suit and purple tie. He was smiling. And as his eyesight started to fade, he felt one last pain, a brutal piercing spike through his throat, causing him to become unconscious. The crowd stopped cheering and instead became frantic. A dark liquid poured out of the fox's mouth. Help them, one yelled. What the? screamed another. The man in the black suit started to hurry out of the dining room, running into an employee. Mr. Afton, the guy in the suit is bleeding. We gotta help him. The man smiled at the employee. I'll call an ambulance. He walked out of the restaurant and got into his car. He w looked through the window while simultaneously coursing a scar on his neck. Another one of his creations backfired on him. He should have been worried that he would be blamed, or maybe feel sorry for the man in pain but he just smiled. Wow, I, I really like that ending. I really like that. Um, yeah, this is a really good story, Classy. Well done for, uh, for, for getting into this book. Nice job. We got like 50 entries in this one, um, which is amazing, by the way. I cannot believe we got so many. Um, as, as I say, I will probably be doing more in the future, but... Um, but yeah, anyway, next time I'm going to be reading The Grand Opening by Matthew Stewart and then Through the Static by Psychic and then New Friends by me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I will see you then. Goodbye.